Now, the OSHA process safety management standard is a very encompassing standard. It literally changes the way PSM covered facilities do business. Now, the PSM standard has 14 elements, and we'll go through each of the 14 elements. We'll go through, list the elements, and then when we get to the auditing part of this course, we're actually going to go through on what you can do to prepare yourself in the event of an OSHA inspection. One of the elements would be employee participation. You know, do we have employees involved in HAZOPs? Do they understand, you know, the hazards of the process that they're working around if it's a covered facility? Process safety information. You know, what are the hazards? What's, what's the information for the process? And that's used for writing operating procedures. That's also used for the process hazard analysis. So the process hazard analysis would be a way to evaluate the potential hazards of the operations, look at what safeguards are in place, and then maybe there's a need for corrective action. For instance, you may find that you have safety relief valves, but the safety relief valves may not be adequately sized, and that's part of the process hazard analysis. Or you may find that you have a detection system but there's no backup system, or maybe you're relying too much on a manual system. So that's the point of the process hazard analysis, is to physically look at the operation, what safeguards do we have in place, what do we need to do to make sure we're reducing the risk to an acceptable level. Additional PSM standard elements would be operating procedures. A lot of these chemical plant operations, a lot of these chemical plant processes are very complex, so we need to have thorough procedures that tell us how to start up a chemical process, how to operate it continuously, and then how to bring it down under normal conditions and emergency conditions. Now, working in the chemical industry for eight years, my experience has been that the most potentially dangerous times in working in a chemical facility for a process is when you're first starting the operation, you're first starting the process, and then you're bringing it down. Because when you're starting it, you're heating up piping, flanges and whatnot, it's a little bit uncontrolled. And when you're bringing it down, you're, you're doing the opposite. You're cooling piping and flanges. So we need to have operating procedures that tell operators how to safely operate equipment to bring something up to operation, run it continuously, and then how to bring it down and you know, decommission the equipment for a shutdown or an emergency shutdown. Do we have training? You know, are operators properly qualified? Are they certified? Do we have training for maintenance employees? Contractors, this is a really big issue because in years past, OSHA had very little say in contractor selection. With the PSM standard, OSHA requires that you have a process in place when you're selecting a contractor you review their safety performance prior to awarding a bid for that contractor in a PSM covered process. Now that comes specifically back from the Phillips petroleum explosion where the use of unsafe contractors led to this explosion. The other thing that I want to mention with contractors is even if you have a process that's not covered by the PSM standard, you still have an obligation to make sure your contractors are working safely. OSHA has what they call the multi-employer doctrine, which means if you hire contractors and they're committing a violation, potentially the contractor can be cited as well as the host employer. So we want to have programs in place for the selection and retention of contractors. Another very important element is the pre-startup safety review. Maybe you have a new process, a modified process, we want to go through and kind of do a what if, a checklist, have we evaluated all the potential concerns prior to the startup of this covered process. Now some additional PSM standard elements, one would be mechanical integrity. A lot of our piping, flanges, compressors, pumps are in very hot environments, very corrosive environments. And that's typically where we're going to have our maintenance department or engineering department set up a mechanical integrity program to do inspections on pumps, compressors, valves, bearings, piping, whatever we need to do. So that needs to be part of our overall mechanical integrity program. Hot work permit. Now there is an OSHA standard 
on hot work and welding. So every facility that's doing hot work with the potential to ignite part of the facility or a process needs to have a hot work permit. Another very important element is called management of change. Now management of change is very critical because in a chemical plant operation, we want to be very careful before we make any type of material change to a process that could affect the overall safety of the process. For instance, if we add a new line, we change a process, maybe we increase the, the flow throughput, we need to consider this from a management of change process. Does this potentially affect the safety of this operation? Another very important item or element of process safety management is incident investigation. If we have an incident or a near miss on a covered process, OSHA says within 48 hours we need to initiate an investigation of that, that incident to find out what took place so that we can prevent it not just at that covered process, but any other covered process within that facility. Now, an additional process safety management element would be emergency planning and response. If we have an emergency, would the operator stay inside the control room or can they shut the equipment down and evacuate? You know, where do we reassemble? We want to make sure we have emergency planning and response. Where do we evacuate to? How do we do our head count? What do we have for, you know, fire response for medical personnel that may have to respond to medical emergencies? Another element is compliance audits. So we're going through every three years and we're reviewing our overall PSM program, doing a compliance type audit to determine where are some of the strengths in our program and where are some of the areas that we have room for improvement. Now the last element is trade secrets. We're not gonna spend very much time on trade secrets, but I just wanna mention that we wanna make sure that anybody potentially impacted or involved with process safety management needs to be aware of any trade secrets or any information that potentially could affect the safe operation of a covered PSM process.